And I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owner of this um, um, land and pay my respect to the elders past and present. I'm originally from Bangladesh, so uh, I came here to do my PhD in 2005. Um, and um, really um, starting my journey with um, the Aboriginal um, research in the area of cancer. So it's my privilege. <laughs> I mean, my um, title of the presentation hasn't been changed in the program, but um, what I will do is, um, I think I need to contextualize myself and how I was involved um, in this uh, space of research. And it's been a journey for me for about nine years now. And so it's been a long journey. And um, which has given me a uh, privilege to be involved with this big Discover TT national um, indigenous um, a program, which is working really comprehensively and looking at different areas of cancer um, in indigenous um, um, Australians. But when I started, there was hardly any talk um, about cancer. So it's been, I, I can see the real changes happening. And I was really privileged and really um, acknowledged that all of you have come here and um, sharing your experiences, which has been really, really what I was sort of, when I started, I, you know, looked up on that when it's going to happen. So. Um, the overview of the journey, that's what I will be beginning with, and then um, the, uh, um, a little bit of overview about um, the study we were involved with, which actually explored uh, Aboriginal people's beliefs and understanding of cancer and their experiences with cancer services in WA. Um, a lot of them may sound a repetition of, of yesterday's um, several factors impacting on the cancer journey, but actually I tried to which was missing yesterday, I tried to sort of pull it off some of the Aboriginal voices to those um, themes which were coming out of the research. So I think that that's the most powerful um, sort of, um, you know, support I have um, and powerful voices um, I have in support of those um, factors. And then I will be highlighting some of the innovative initiatives, which has um, already been known in, in bits and pieces. And from there onwards, we will, um, I will um, give an little overview of what we are um, looking at in future. So um, our journey um, started in 2005 when we started with a small consultancy project for Cancer Council WA and did an environmental scan of all cancer council in Australia. Uh, cancer Council Western Australia wanted to improve their engagement with Aboriginal patients with cancer and Aboriginal Australians. So we collected evidence from all the other Cancer Council in, in Australia and shared the learning and understanding with the um, Cancer Council uh, Western Australia. And um, Tracy yesterday presented, um, so that was uh, one of the recommendations of the, of the um, environmental scan we, we did for all the cancer councils. And the courses um, developed from, from that recommendation. And uh, also uh, in that report, we, uh, the health, health professionals in cancer council, they highlighted that they have very little understanding about Aboriginal people's beliefs and understanding of cancer. So that's an um, area which they didn't have any understanding. So I thought, okay, let's take um, that as my challenge and uh, let's talk to Aboriginal patients with cancer, collect their stories and collect their issues and their experiences with cancer services. So that actually led me to do um, a literature review of um, two clicks, sorry. Yeah, uh, and um, a literature review which looked at, an, um, at the disease, um, the Aboriginal people's beliefs and understanding of cancer in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the USA, so, so that we could find some synergies in terms of experiences. And um, that's when I sort of developed my PhD project, and which I already spoke about, that, that was looking at mainly exploring beliefs and understanding of cancer um, in Aboriginal people. Next, please. So my PhD was on towards understanding disparities in cancer outcomes for Aboriginal Australians, exploring Aboriginal perceptions and experiences of cancer in WA. Um, and um, I was lucky to get two more fundings after that, which explored a bit more um, of the service provider's um, point of view in dealing with Aboriginal patients with cancer. 
So very quickly, um, the, I collected um, stories from uh, Perth, Geraldton, Robin, and Carnarvon, which was in 2007 and 2009. Um, 31 um, stories were collected uh, from Aboriginal people affected by cancer. So it could be other patients or family members um, who have had any uh, uh, family members died of uh, or experiencing cancer at that time. And the additional perspectives of, of from health service providers, which was, which came from the two funding, uh, subsequent funding, which was collected in 2011. Um, so the, uh, what I would like to do now is to highlight some of the factors you have already um, came across yesterday, but it, this is mainly coming from the study we have been involved. Um, uh, Gail highlighted some of the social and cultural um, aspects which has been sort of impacting on Aboriginal people's experience with cancer. We also found that. And um, so the first item was socio-political -pol context, which um, covers colonization and aftermaths, distrust, racism, negative experiences within the health services, all those impacting on their journey with the cancer. Um, knowledge and understanding about cancer was one of the um, prime factors which, uh, which made a lot of the journeys were really difficult. And um, then the health system factors, which was uh, comprising of lack of support for Aboriginal patients with cancer, um, service providers level of understanding, the physical environment in the hospital, Aboriginal workforce, lack of Aboriginal workforce in the system, and um, you know, se several health professionals were highlighting the consent issues, the concept of time, the difference in, in the concept of time between Aboriginal patients and the non-Aboriginal service providers, and flexibility around those factors you know, within the health, health services were, all, were coming up as frequent mention of factors, um, which was uh, challenging for a lot of patients. Communication was the biggest, biggest, uh, one of the biggest um, theme came um, through, uh, which covers use of ter terminology, privacy, transparency, sensitivity and compassion um, in terms of communication, fear and uncertainty, level of understanding. Cultural influences, which um, covers a connection to land and family, shame and embarrassment, gender factor, fear, stigma, traditional medicine, and lack of understanding about use of traditional medicine and healing um, in, in cancer journey was one of the factors. And spiritual beliefs, um, which was related to the body images, um, the relationship with the ancestors in the past, and traditional healing as well. So um, I'll be um, just giving a few quotes which came through my study. Um, uh, so it's the socio-political socio context. The impact of historical, socio-political, and cultural context impacted on Aboriginal people's um, beliefs and understanding of cancer. And causes of cancer often be related to the Western invasion in the country. So just it's, it's more powerful if I um, um, you know, read the Quote, because the power was taken away by the government policies, the Aboriginal men couldn't continue their law business, and women couldn't continue their rubs and stuffs, because a lot of them were taken away and put in a mission where they were not allowed to practice their culture and law. They were taken away all over Australia, and I believe that the land was very important. The environment, the land, that was all taken away, so that causes a lot of stress. The stolen generation, people were in stress and depression. That sort of things can cause cancer. So um, I, that, that this reminds me, um, Dr. Lewis yesterday was saying about attachment to nature and meanings in life. So I think this, you can see that, that connections is very strong in, in those space. Cancer means death. Um, to most of the Aboriginal patients and family members I've spoken with. And the word involves a great fear. Um, so one of the pa participants was saying, I feel sorry for the other people who don't really understand cancer. A lot of full blood Aboriginal people get very angry with the doctors. They think the doctors are going to fix them up, you know. And interestingly, the treatment, when uh, a patient was accessing treatment, they, they had an expectation that they will be cured. So that causes a lot of misunderstanding and distrust again towards the health system once that wasn't um, sort of happening in a lot of space. So I think this sort of conversation we had yesterday um, is really, really important. Um, 
Okay, inadequate understanding of the biomedical terminology, consequences of cancer treatment outcomes and after effects were also um, uh, as a big factor. Uh, various beliefs, social, economic, psychological, and cultural factors influence on decision making um, uh, of accessing the treatment. Uh, one of the participants was saying she didn't want to tell because she didn't want us to worry about her. So it's about the families. Traditional healing during the cancer journey is often not being very well understood by the um, mainstream service providers. And one of the patients was saying, I would love to stay just on bush medicine, just depend on, on that and get it over. And um, spirituality, uh, connections, and the body images. One of the participants was saying, look, my mom gave me this throat, my neck, my body. I won't be letting no doctors cut me open. Um, so, And health systems and structures. Um, health service providers lack of understanding or limited understanding of different issues and we, we spoke about it and discussed yesterday that so often the health service providers become very fearful about, about open conversation with Aboriginal patients. And that, um, you know, in different spectrum of spaces of the, for the families, um, dying at home, language, food, life circumstances of Aboriginal people in rural and remote area. And some of the service providers were mentioning about consent and um, getting consent, um, which is mainstream service providers mainly look for individual consent, where a lot of the Aboriginal people actually look for community or family um, consent and the concept of time. Insufficient information and support system um, was found um, in the research. Um, and neg previous negative experiences and perceptions of the health system and willingness to access services one of, was um, one of the biggest one. And communication, it, it was huge. So we have published actually um, quite um, uh, uh, most of our findings and we have developed this um, um, booklet for the community um, and translation um, our research findings to the to going back to the community uh, whispered sort of stuff I have a few copies of that if you are interested feel free to um, contact me and I have got um, uh, you know email uh, I can email you if you give me that you know um, your email address. so these are some of the participants and my memories with my journey so the key messages um, I think um, for all of us is we need to still, we need to acknowledge past injustices and the impact it has on the current health status of Aboriginal people. I mean, we can't ignore that. I mean, that's definitely a point of start. Appreciate the importance of holistic and traditional healing approaches. Ensure Aboriginal workforce presentation, uh, representation in the services. Deliver services closer to home. Um, and um, understand the physiological and psychological impact of not having the comfort of family of support for of family members. Recognize the complex factors that, that may cause delayed diagnosis and discontinuity of treatment. And you need, you know, everyone needs to um, unpack those is issues while you are having a conversation with um, Aboriginal patients. Aboriginal inputs in cancer-related programs is definitely. Uh, happening a lot it wasn't happening at that time so it's it's um, we should we all should um, get a you know round of applause for that and um, partnership with the Aboriginal communities is, is, is essential next please and um, uh, other factors I have um, spoken with um, and support system where Gail has been doing a fantastic job in 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 those spaces and what I've found, often little steps and change in service delivery can actually make huge differences in people's cancer journey. So we need to understand this fact and try to, just as small um, changes, um, I'll, if I have time, I, I'm pretty sure I won't, but I will tell you a, <laughs> a very um, touchy story I heard from one of the service providers. And survivors need to step up, which is happening a lot, which was fabulous yesterday to look at that. So um, some of the innovative initiatives, it's, it's been reported in, in um, the literature and by word of mouth. And 
Uh, we have heard some of the discussions had uh, yesterday about the telemedicine for rural cancer um, care in, in Townsville Cancer Center in, in Queensland. Um, so, and also cancer nurse coordinator's position wasn't there when I was doing this research. Uh, so that has been created, so that has been helping a lot um, with the rural and remote cancer patients. So that's a good, good model, uh, but although we don't have Aboriginal cancer nurse coordinators in many places as yet. Only I think in six months, um, New South Wales is having one position, but that's an absolute necessary to um, cover the burden and the, you know, the, the complexity of the cancer journey for a, an Aboriginal patients. Outreach um, clinics in New South Wales, um, they are uh, providing cancer services in rural communities in, um, are largely based on outreach clinics where a medical oncologist and or radiation oncologist provide periodic clinics to base hospitals in rural area health services. So I think there are several models has been sort of tried and trying. And finally, the Alan Walker Cancer Center in Darwin has been doing fantastic um, engagement with um, Aboriginal patients with cancer in Darwin in, in, in Northern Territory and you will listen more about uh, that, I think, in, in, uh, in the afternoon. But as part of the Discover TT, as we are in, in, involved with um, Gail and the, and the national team, um, we are, um, in, the, in Western Australia, we are um, um, developing a project which will look more um, sort of systematically to, you know, the innovative models of care and any sort of good examples of service that delivery to Aboriginal patients with um, cancer. So um, from Western Australia, we are, um, um, you know, leading three projects, end of life and palliative care needs, the distinctive um, cancer care requirements and innovative models of care. So the innovative models of care um, is basically to, uh, our objective is to identify, describe and share the knowledge about the innovations that are working well to optimize delivery of cancer treatment to Aboriginal Australians. I think Gail has made it clear that it's not about prevention, it's more about service delivery and health services research. So we would like to um, uh, work towards um, understanding uh, what are the steps has been taken to um, you know, make the journey more culturally appropriate for Aboriginal patients with cancer. Uh, what we are planning to do is to start, begin with an environmental scan, which will um, involve some um, a small survey and plus interviews with with all the cancer treatment centres across Australia. Um, and can you please? Um, and, uh, and conduct a survey and a telephone interview uh, with, with some of the key people in those um, treatment services and find out what they are doing. Um, that's the first stage of, of identifying the innovative um, services. But I think this will give us more systematic approach to look at um, and uh, you know, um, look at what is what has been um, done in Australia in terms of uh, addressing Aboriginal patients' needs, and then. Um, Basically, uh, we will select uh, programs or centres who is working well with Aboriginal Australians, um, and we will do us in in depth case studies working with those services so that that knowledge can be shared across um, other health services, and um, we can learn from each other what can be done, how things can be better, and what are the you know um, things they are doing so that that is making a difference to the journey of of. Our, of an Aboriginal person's um, or family's uh, life with cancer. So we really like to know about your initiatives and this is an opportunity I'd like to take um, to share, um, you know, I mean, I'm more than happy if anyone comes and tell me about what are the good things you are doing in the community because this is an um, opportunity we won't be able to get I don't know whether next year or not, but um, so feel, please, um, I mean, contact me after the presentation and we really like to know and we will be in touch with you if, if you um, have any information um, and we, acknowledge, we will acknowledge your, um, you know, contribution to this big and b bigger than Ben-Hur project, I think. Uh, <laughs> so um, thank you very much.